In this training session, we will review how to set up your facility into the NHSN application once you have received confirmation that your facility was successfully enrolled. After submitting your NHSN consent form, you will receive a confirmation by NHSN within two to three business days, confirming that your facility has been successfully enrolled. It will look similar to the snapshot here, and it will entail your facility name, facility ID, and language just verifying that it's been enrolled. So now you're able to go in and set up your facility. There are two steps. One is mapping locations. The second step is conferring conferring and joining uh, two groups, which is, one is the NCC group, the other one is the Health Insight group. So the first thing you need to do is log in. And to log in, go to https colon forward slash forward slash sams.cdc.gov. You'll be directed to the login page that looks like this in the top. There are three login portals. Be sure to select the SAMS grid card credentials portal. And then once you have logged in, it will take you to the page, the first login page that looks like this, which is the SAMS grid card credential picture. And it says username and password. This will be your email address. And the password be the password you set up when you initially set up your SAMS account. Once you have successfully logged into that, it will take you to the login options page, which is with your SAMS grid card credentials. So in this snapshot here, you see D1, D3, F1. That can vary depending on each login. So just be sure to log in the appropriate grid based on whatever's being asked here for the letter and number. Once you've done that, log in. And once you have successfully logged in, select NHSN reporting. Depending on whether you're reporting for one facility or multiple facilities, the next page will vary. So if you're reporting for one facility, you will be directed to the home page, which we'll see in just a minute. If you're reporting for more than one facility, you will be directed to the below page. It looks like this. It's called the landing page. This is where you will select the appropriate facility you are setting up. And the next option will be the component, which is long-term care facility. Select that and submit. Then once you have successfully passed that, you will be directed to the home page here. And so on the left side, you will see the blue menu screen um, with categories here. And to start the mapping, this is the first step that has to be done for setup. And this is to identify uh, where the events are uh, occurred. Um, so this will come in handy later down the line when you are um, analyzing reports. If you will help you notice if there are CWSL events occurring more in a certain ward than others. And so to do that, you go to facility locations, and here you are directed to your locations page. And so you, the, you're going to code, or uh, I should say, map each location individually. So when I say locations, I'm referring to boards or units. The reason why I'm using the word locations is because NHSN uses that word here, but it's the board, the board or the units that your facility um, has. And you will do this for each individual ward or a unit or location. So your code is usually what the facility currently calls the location. So for example, one south, two west, one north, any of those or any other ones that you call the location is what you put there, it's free text. Your label is to help easily identify the location. So it can either be the same as your code, you can type it the exact same, or if you wanna be a little more descriptive, you can do so, for example, if your code is one south and your label is dementia because the majority of the residents in that specific ward have dementia. Um, this will just come in handy down the line when you're trying to identify the location of where the specimen was collected for a positive C. difficile lab ID event. And then for CDC location description, um, there's drop downs here. You will select um, the most appropriate one. And so, as you see here, there's an example. This is a list that is located in this link here. So if you were to go to this link, there's uh, quite a bit of pages 
but you will go down to page 28 to 29, which applies to long-term care facility. All the other ones apply to different location settings. So you wanna go down to page 28 if you wanna get a better description of these specific drop-downs, what they mean to help you identify the proper mapping. So once you have passed that and you're ready to do the status, it should always be active because you're only mapping active locations. The bed size is the amount of beds that are currently available for that specific ward. And once you have completed these categories, you will select add, and then you will notice that ward that you've added um, drop down on a table here in the bottom. And after you've entered in all, you repeat the steps for all of your locations, you will see, um, you can hit display all, which is kind of cut off in the snapshot here, but there's a display all, and once you do that, it will show all of them. Because before you do this, you'll just see one at a time, it will only show the most recent one you just added. So if you want to make sure that you've successfully added all of the locations or wards, um, you would select display all. So I'm going to skip this page. This is just for the training, the live training we did where we did case scenario, which is to test your knowledge. It's available on your handout. You're welcome to test your own knowledge, but I'm not going to do that for this specific training here. And so you're done with mapping. Um, and now the next step is to join groups and confer rights. So this is to allow the health insight group for your state, as well as the NCC, we're both part of this project. So this is joining groups and conferring rights is to allow us to see the data that you're reporting. It does not include patient data. We do not see patient data. Only you and any other users you have in your facility that have access to the facility group can see the patient data. But it just allows us to see the data you're reporting. So such as um, the, uh, the events, the type of event, whether it's community onset, long-term care, where the event took place, um, things like that. So that's the reason why you would join Income for Rights to those two groups. So to do that, um, you are going to be logged in by that point because you will have done your mapping. So go to group on the left side and select join. The group ID and joining password you are going to get for the Health Insight group. You can either contact your NHSN contact person, which is Lisa Barton, um, currently at Health Insight, um, and I'll show her email address, as well as the your state lead. You can contact either one and they should have a group ID and joining password for your state group. The other is the NCC group, which will also be in that document. So you will enter this in each for each group. So you will repeat the steps for the second time, for the second group you're joining and conferring. So let's just go over this really quickly. So you have your group ID and password for Health Insight, for example. You enter in the group ID number, the joining password, you select join group. Once you've done that, you'll get a warning pop up. Select okay, you can just bypass it. The next step, you'll automatically be um, taken to the Confer Rights long-term care page. It will look like this. Everything that's circled is everything that should be checked already. It's a default. Um, it's already been set up that way for that group. Just verify that all areas that are checked are properly checked, as well as the location type, should say FAC wide in, which stands for the facility wide in, since you're reporting on the entire facility. And location should also say FAC wide in, and the event type should be lab ID. Once you verify that these are all properly checked and included in here, the, the month and year does not have to match what you see here. It will be different, it depends on how it was set up, but that's not really the important part. It's more of what's checked and what's included here. So you will select accept. And then once you do that, you'll be directed back to the membership page here and it will show the group you just added. And as I mentioned, you're gonna repeat this for the second group, do the exact same thing, enter in the group ID, password, join group. And then you want to make sure to that once you're done, you've added both groups here that they're both showing and that will confirm that you've successfully joined and confer rights to both groups. And that's how you join and confer rights. Um, so that's basically all there is to setting up. It's only two steps. And here's the contact information, as I mentioned, an HSN contact person's Lisa Barton, that's her email address. State leads, New Mexico for Shannon, Kupka, Nevada's Donna Thorson, Oregon's Leah Brandis, Utah's Michelle Carson. You can contact any 
one of these email addresses to get help with any part of your NHSN setup. And here's some references and resources also available on your handout. Um, you will see the login page here, the training recordings, just the link to that, and as well as the mapping uh, page I was telling you about for pages 20 to 29 that has the, the uh, definitions for the mapping. Then you can go to that link there, and here's some contact information for NHSN and SAMS. So that's all there is to this training. Thank you.